Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Mystic Vale Twilight Garden, which is the fifth expansion for Mystic Vale, the card crafting game of Nature's Power. And I'm going to spend a few minutes today letting you know what you get in this box because you get a lot. In fact, this is the biggest expansion to date in terms of new cards. There are more cards in this expansion than came with the original Mystic Veil. Because actually there's an equal number of Veil cards and, um, oh, what do you call them, advancement cards. But then there are also some new leader cards as well. So more cards in the original game. And while this expansion doesn't necessarily reinvent the Mystic Veil wheel, there are so many cool new things in here. Now, there are way too many cards for me to go over all of them. So basically, I'm just going to start putting them on screen one at a time. And if you want to know more about them, you can pause and read the descriptions of them. Just so you can get a better idea. Um, because, like I said, there's just too much. It would be like trying to basically give a tour of every single card in the original Mystic Veil. Vale, or it would even be more. Um, but there are... A couple of new things that this expansion adds. And in fact, uh, the witch tree here even talks about it. You'll notice if you look at it, all players must gain a curse equal to how many um, negative victory points they've got on their other veils combined. What's a curse? It's a new type of token. And you can see you might get a lot of curses because there's like uh, negative five co combos if, they, if you collect so many. Now, what are curses? Well, they are basically negative points. At the end of the game, you lose a point for every curse you've got. And so you might say, well, well, what's the point of that then? There are already cards that do negative points. Um, like this one, I lose two points at the end of the game if I have a ranger's outpost. What's the point of curses? The interesting thing about curses is the most common place you're going to get them is not veils, is not heroes. It's actually going to be on your advancement cards. And the thing is, as you are drawing cards to, you know, and trying to push your luck and seeing whether you're going to bust or spoil, which is the game term for it, you might notice that, oh my gosh, this turn, I'm going to get a lot of curses. I'm going to get four curses off of these cards that just came out. And you might think, ah, well, that's, that means I just got to live with negative four points at the end of the game. That'll kill me. Here's the deal. If you spoil... In the same way that you don't get to collect your mana, you don't get to collect your spirit, you also don't collect those curses. And so, I gotta say, this is what I always appreciate more than anything else when John D. Clare, the designer, comes up with new stuff, is ways to encourage players, like my wife, who are risk-averse, to decide to push their luck and spoil more often. Now, if you are going to be getting a lot of curses, you might say, you know what? What I'll be able to do with these cards that are coming out, what I'll be able to buy is not worth collecting these curses. I'm just going to go on ahead and spoil. But And then you draw another card looking to spoil, because yeah, you figure, ah, I'm just going to bail on it. But then you say, oh my gosh, my best card came out. Now I want to stop. So is it worth earning those curse tokens to trigger my best, most powerful card? Or should I go on ahead and draw and spoil, because my card will come around again? And, you know, hey, if I've got some amulets, as you know, when, uh, when you spoil nowadays, it's uh, much, much uh, cooler. All right, let's see, I think those are upside down. But anyway, uh, there were all our leaders, there were all the veils, and oh, we've got so many, so many new uh, creatures. Let's see. Now, these are tinier, of course. Let's go on ahead and zoom in a bit more so you can get a good look at them. All righty. Uh, Gossamer Brood and uh, the Black the black Ordent, as always. The art is great. Uh, and, um, you know, a lot of these cards, they're just going to be new variations on a theme based on what we've seen before. But there are still quite a few, a few cool new things like, um, you know, hey, pull this thing off the card entirely. Uh, you know, that's not something you see every day with other um, advancement cards. Or, um, let's see, you may allow all players to turn over their mana tokens or their artifact, or not their artifacts, their... Uh, amulets. Yikes. That's an interesting thing. Talk about interactivity. Uh, you know, you want to make sure you do this when everybody uh, d won't benefit from that, but you will. So it's all a game of timing. So lots of cool, lots of really cool new things. Uh, discard. You can place this at the bottom of your deck and um, to the player to your left. If, if I put a whole bunch of curse cards on here, this Wayfarer could say, oh, hey, neighbor, why don't I go live in your deck for a while until that player, um, you know, does, uh, you know, pushes on to the next poor sucker. Lots of really cool, fresh ideas. I am surprised how John 
keeps coming up with new and interesting twists to this core formula, but he definitely has. You know, while again, there are plenty of cards that you know don't look out of place, you know, like this hippogriff, nothing particularly special there. There are lots of really cool new fun features. Um, or, or, hey, just ways to get rid of curses. Good to have an herbalist on hand to get rid of those curses. Um, maybe I don't mind collecting curses if I've got an herbalist who's going to let me get rid of them over the course of the game. Um, looking, uh, you know, you know, uh, looking through decks, that's cool. Um, oh, getting victory points from the box, not triggering the end of the game, not racing to the end of the game by earning victory points. Very interesting. Although, um, curses, curses, curses. All righty. Uh, forest Worm, right? That's a little bit more straightforward. But again, like I said, oh, cannot spoil. Very nice while on deck. So definitely fill this up with all kinds of red. And there are, you know, the, the, the corruption, the creep. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm only like halfway through these cards. There are still so many more for uh, you guys to see. It's just absolutely crazy. Um, I mean, they're just mind-bending how much new stuff there is. Now, all that said, you know, the, the main thing in the game is this new concept of curses. There's one more thing I will actually be able to show in a second when we get up to the level threes. We're still in the level twos at the moment, but I'll be getting there shortly. All right. And it's really cool as well. But while we're working our way there, yeah, presumably you're pausing every once in a while to look at these things, or you're just appreciating the art, I will mention one thing I'm really disappointed about. I already talked about when I did my uh, Mystic Veil Conclave video that I really, Jen and I, really dig the Conclave format. Uh, we think it's really cool. Again, I, it's not for everybody um, because, you know, it, it arguably makes a longer set of time, longer teardown time, unless you take advantage of the clever way they've done it. That looks a lot like a Sarah Angel, doesn't it? Oh, my. Anyway, sorry, old Magic the Gathering uh, uh, memories pop into the surface there. But anyway, I really like the Conclave thing. And if you like the Conclave idea as much as Jen and I do, you might be a little bit disappointed because I am shocked that this copy um, in the box, uh, Twilight Garden, there is no new Conclave cards for these new cards. These cards do not work their way into Conclaves that exist. So they are, strictly speaking, out of the box, incompatible with the Conclave system that was introduced in the last expansion. And uh, personally, like if you don't mind, hey, no big deal. You just want to mix these all up and just uh, you know take things as they come. That's great. But for me and Jen, I was very disappointed that AEG did not just print out you know four or five more cards, so we could have found ways to mix and match these by you know using the Conclave system because it's so so nice and it really improves the overall uh, gameplay that you can get. Now that said. Um, what AEG has done, if you go on their website, is you can actually print out new Conclave cards for Twilight Gardens. You can print them out and include them, you know, the, the separators and all that. And I guess that's okay. But again, that is a little bit disappointing, I'm going to say. And I'm really kind of bummed by that. But still, otherwise, I am very, very happy with the expansion. Uh, the curses are very, very cool. They can really mix things up. So many neat new special powers. But the last new thing is a new type of card where it takes up two of the three spaces. These are really interesting. And unfortunately, there's only four of them. I would love to see more of these. And, and they're only, uh, they're all level three. So you're not really going to see them that often. You're not going to get to buy them that often. But I think this is such a really cool idea. I would love to see more of it. It's such a neat twist to the core notion of how you build these cards. Um, that, you know, these ones come, you know, preordained. And if you want to get them, you've got to build with these in mind because they take up so much space. Really, really neat idea. Very cool, and I look forward to more expansions in the future that push this more and start letting us see these at lower levels so we can buy them more quickly instead of you know only getting a few of them at the end. But anyway, folks, that's it. That is Mystic Vale Twilight Garden. So much cool stuff. Just goes to show that the future is very, very bright for this game. Um, I think now... 
uh, with this expansion, it would be impossible to fit all of the cards in the original Mystic Veil box. So that Mystic Veil Conclave Super Box is definitely coming in handy. And as I've said before, I cannot wait to see what lies in wait in the future for Mystic Veil. And that's the rundown, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye